Hey guys, my name is Sean. I'm starting a new channel here called Dungeon Printer, where we talk about 3D printing, painting, uh, crafting, just maps, lore, anything that makes your tabletop, your fantasy world a little bit more realistic through props or fun things that you can do. Uh, now the first video I wanted to make is something I'm pretty excited about. I've been waiting for this thing to come in the mail for a while. Uh, now back in December, I backed a Kickstarter for a large format resin 3D printer uh, and it arrived today. Uh, so I'm really excited to show you guys the giant ass Frozen Transform. Uh, so we're gonna do an unboxing, a quick setup, talk about it a little bit uh, and get right into it. This video isn't sponsored, so obviously it'll be just my own opinions on the product and packaging. As you can see just from the box, this thing is big, uh, really big. The standard model comes with a 13.3 inch screen, which breaks down to 11.5 by 6.5 by 15.75 inch print area. You can literally print a one gallon milk jug with a two liter soda bottle next to it and still have some room to spare. I'll talk more about specs later, but for now let's get this thing open. The box itself came wrapped in plastic bindings and was secured pretty well. Now I didn't realize this while opening it, but the bindings are there to hold the top of the box onto the bottom. As you can see here, a simple lift of the box itself was all I really needed to open it, instead of lifting the 70 pound machine out of the top like I did. Inside the box, the machine was surrounded with one and a quarter inch foam on all sides and two inch foam on the top, ensuring that it would be safe from most normal hits the box might take from shipment. The machine's also wrapped in pretty heavy plastic, uh, much thicker than typical shrink wrap. So as far as packaging goes, I'm pretty happy with how well it was protected. Now that we've got the transform out of the box, let's go over to my print table and take a look. To give another idea of this thing's size, I placed the transform next to my other printers. My trusty Photon looks absolutely tiny compared to it, and even the FDM Ender 3 with a spool of filament barely keeps up with the height. There are three fans around the transform to keep the massive screen cool during printing, uh, and it looks like there's an exhaust fan in the back as well. The back also has the power switch and cord, as well as an ethernet port, two USB ports, and the micro SD port, which I'll complain quite a bit about later. The door hinges are on the sides of the machine, meaning the doors will swing open left and right instead of upwards like many resin printers do. The doors also have red UV blocking windows on the front, whereas the Photon has them on the left, right, and top as well. Which brings us to the meat of the machine, the print area. Now I ordered the standard transform, which comes with the 13.3 inch screen and print area we talked about before. There's also an option to purchase a secondary setup with two 5.5 inch screens next to each other. One thing I immediately love is the dual rail system for the build plate. With a plate and prints this heavy, stability is going to be crucial, so I'm happy to see they took that seriously. I should also mention that my shipment came in two separate boxes. Uh, the first was the printer itself, and the second contained all the other parts. All in all, it contained 7 kilograms of beige resin, 5 of which was included in the purchase and 2 of which came from stretch goals from the Kickstarter. The build plate, which was full of drilled holes, which I imagine is to help keep heavy prints attached to the plate, but I am interested to see how this affects the bottom of prints if I print flat to the plate. A CAT6 cable and Wi-Fi dongle for connecting to the machine. A very cheap plastic scraper. A much nicer metal scraper. The door handles. A cute little plastic funnel. A pair of gloves. The power cord and the extra FEP sheet from the Kickstarter stretch goals. And of course, bubble wrap. My first hiccup came when I went to turn the machine on. The LED screen came on as expected, but then it just sat there. And sat there, and sat there. The machine came with no manual, no first time instructions, or any other kind of documentation, so I was sort of left figuring it out on my own. I later found out there was an online manual on a Google Drive by flopping around the Frozen website for a little bit. The manual does state that it will take about two minutes on first boot, but I watched mine for near 15 minutes the first time before switching it off. While I was waiting for it to finish its initial boot up, I noticed the micro SD card in the back wasn't inserted, which could be why the machine didn't boot up. However, when I went to insert it, the massive black hole that is the SD card opening in the machine swallowed it up and I spent the next 15 minutes taking apart the machine to fish it out. There's absolutely no reason for this hole to be this big. As I was reassembling the screen, it also took me a good 5 minutes to get the screen back on due to the placement of the fan and circuit boards. With even a quarter inch of more space, it would have been immensely easier. 
but as it is, you might struggle a bit to change this out. It's nowhere near as smooth as the GIF on the Kickstarter showed. With the micro SD card rescued and the transform reassembled, I turned it back on and it loaded up perfectly. It still took about a minute to boot the main screen, but I'll take that over infinite loading. The home screen looks similar to other Frozen products and gives the choices of plates, profile, setup, z-axis, LCD test, and Wi-Fi. Plates is where your print files are loaded to and where you print from. And profile just look to be settings you can preset to choose between quickly to save yourself some time. The setup screen gave the option to shut down, reboot, check status, and update the firmware. I'm not sure why someone would go to all this trouble to select shut down versus just turning it off, but if another Frozen user out there knows something I don't, feel free to drop it in the comments. The manual doesn't say why the shutdown option is important, but even if you go through the whole process and confirm, it just tells you to switch off the machine anyway. The setup menu also has an SD card icon which lets you install a different one and reboot the system easily. The manual also doesn't give any information on the status screen. Judging by the images, I'd assume these are CPU or RAM, SD capacity usage, and temperature, but feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. LCD test gives three different options to make sure all your lights are working properly, and Wi-Fi lets you find your home network so you can easily send files over without having to use a USB or SD card. Last up is the Z-axis option, which lets you manually move the build plate up and down, and is also used for the first time alignment of the build plate. You have the option of moving the plate up and down by 1mm, 10mm, or 50mm by pressing the little box here and using the arrow keys. It's not as responsive as the Photon, but it does what it needs to. Now to calibrate the Z-axis, install the plate onto the machine by sliding the slotted part of the metal under the plastic knobs and pushing it all the way back before tightening the knobs. When you're ready to calibrate, the dot between the arrows on the Z-axis screen is what you'll want to press, which will pull up your instructions. Now this dot is not the most intuitive thing in the world, I would have chosen a button all its own, but it is what it is. The instructions will tell you to remove the resin vat, wipe the screen clean, and place down a normal sheet of paper, and then loosen the four screws that secure the build plate. When you follow all the instructions, you can hit next and wait seven eternities for the build plate to make its way down. Once it's flat, press down lightly on all four corners to make sure the plate is settled, then go around and snug up the screws before doing another pass to tighten them completely. To finish calibration, press next again on the screen, and then go read the entire Count of Monte Cristo novel while you wait for the plate to reset back to home. Now, I'm not going to be doing any printing in this video, but I did want to get the machine unboxed and show you guys everything that came with it, uh, things I liked about it, things I didn't like about it, and just its massive scale compared to everything else that I've worked in. Um, so hopefully you enjoyed that, um, but I do plan on doing some videos in the future that go over some of the projects that I'm going to be working on, some of my prints, um, and just problems that I run into. There's bound to be problems with this thing. Uh, like I said, I'm probably one of the first 20 people to receive this machine in the world. Um, so there's gonna be issues, there's gonna be firmware fixes, uh, but hopefully we can get all that stuff ironed out so that when the wider audience gets this machine, um, we can have a little bit of a smoother experience. Uh, but for now, I'm gonna go over some of the things, uh, final impressions, things I like about it, things I didn't like about it, issues that I had, uh, and we'll end up the video from there. If you hadn't already noticed, I'm pretty excited to get some massive prints underway without having to slice them up, glue them back together, and all the stuff I had to deal with with previously smaller resin printers. There are a few things I'd like to see improved already though. I talked about the micro SD card slot being way too big for what it needs to be. If you're not careful, you'll spend 15 minutes or more fishing your SD card out of the bottom of the machine. Reassembling the bed is not nearly as easy as Frozen made it out to be, so that could stand for slightly more room to work with. My right door was also bent a little bit upon arrival. It was really easy to fix, but with how thin the metal of the case is, I can see this being a common problem for people. That aside, the construction of the double access, build plate, all of the machine's important mechanics seem really solid. And it certainly doesn't feel cheap in any way. I joked about the Z-axis taking a really long time to make the full trip, but when you've got almost 16 inches of print area to cover, it's bound to take a while. 
Now other specs we didn't cover that will be important to your decision are the screen and XY resolution. While the massive screen is 4K, it only has 76 micron XY resolution. If you opt for the dual 5.5 inch screens, each of those will drop you down to 47 microns, but are only 2K, which is in line with the Photon. Without doing any prints, I can't really tell you how that 29 micron difference affects anything, but I'll try and do a comparison video later to see. I'm personally keeping my Photon anyway, so smaller, more detailed work can be done on that if there ends up being a noticeable difference. I think that about wraps it up. I hope you enjoyed this video. Like I said, this is a brand new channel, but I'll be trying to upload more Frozen Transform and other 3D printing content as time allows. So feel free to like and subscribe if you want to see more of this kind of stuff in the future. Frozen Transform is just now starting to ship out to the first backers, but I'd expect Frozen to start ramping up production and delivery across the next few months to get them out to all their Kickstarter backers before moving on to the post-Kickstarter pre-orders. Like I said, I'm probably one of the first 20 or so people in the world to get this printer, so there's bound to be some issues. Uh, I'll try to work through them as best I can and keep you guys updated. And that about wraps us up. Thanks for tuning in. So long and happy printing.